Justin Miller here, Oxnard College Physics. This segment, we're going to go ahead and do a couple problems involving some images formed by thin lenses. So let us just get to it. So here's the problem. We've got a converging lens that has a focal length of 30 centimeters. We want to produce a proper ray diagram and determine the image distance, the orientation, and the lateral magnification along with the image type. So we are going to look at two different cases in this particular um, problem. We're going to start off with an object distance of 50 centimeters, and then we're going to change the object distance to 10 centimeters and see what we've got going on. So let us start off with the 50 centimeter distance here and draw out some things here. I'm trying to draw this nicely, but let's see how that works out. We're going to take ourselves a nice little plane here for the principal axis. Go ahead and take this to be our lens. We've got a focal length of 30 centimeters, so I'm going to scale this out. Let's just do 30. Why not? So 30 centimeters and on this side too centimeters and then we're going to go ahead and put our object distance of 50 centimeters which is going to be here so extend this principal axis a little bit all right go ahead and put our object like such a little bit smaller Staying with some paraxial rays here. We got focal point, focal point, lens. This is said to be a converging lens, so let's just go ahead and get our ray diagram going on here. We'll try this one. So, first ray travels parallel to the principal axis and refracts such that it is aligned with or goes through a focal point. Again, this being a converging lens means that parallel light rays with respect to the principal axis will converge towards the principal axis. So we've got this first ray here coming from the top, traveling along, parallel to the principal axis. The ray comes here, strikes this uh, lens, excuse me, strikes the lens, yes, and then carries on. Travel in parallel to the principal axis. I may have to extend this, so I'm just going to do it now. As such, all right. Second ray goes through the intersection point of the lens and the principal axis, unchanged in its path. So let's see what's going to happen with this one. Oh yeah. I need a longer stick. That's okay. Line it up. About like that. That looks semi decent. Proceeds. Extend this one. There we go. You can see that they're intersecting over here. That's a good, that should be where the third one also wants to intersect. So let's just go ahead and check that out. This third ray goes through or is aligned with the other focal point, this being the other one, and then refracts parallel to the principal axis. All right, so we're actually gonna go through this focal point. It's the one that's left. And trying to line this up decently. and then parallel to the principal axis. And that looks fairly good. And what do we get? Ooh, we get this nice intersection there. Which would be the tip. I'm just gonna freehand extend that out. The tip of the arrow. So we've got the image right there. So we got ourselves a P, got ourselves a Q. 
obviously we got ourselves a theft as well. We can see from this that the image is inverted. It is a real image because we have a physical intersection of light rays after the refraction has taken place. And the magnification is a little bit difficult to tell. It looks like it might be a little bit bigger, but we'd have to kind of calculate that out. We can measure it, but it's not super significant in this part here. Anyways, let's go ahead and calculate this stuff out now. So make sure the math matches the picture here. We've got 1 over P plus 1 over Q is equal to 1 over F, which gives us that Q is equal to the quantity of 1 over F minus 1 over P to the negative 1, giving us that Q is equal to 1 over 30 centimeters minus 1 over 50 centimeters to the negative 1, gives us 75, yeah, 75 centimeters. So there's Q, 75 centimeters. That's good. Look at the magnification. And equal to negative Q over P. Well, negative 75 centimeters divided by 50 centimeters. That looks like a big 1.5. 1 1.5. Negative. When I said it's inverted, it's 1.5 times. I, that doesn't really seem 1.5 times. But in these ray diagrams, sometimes don't give everything working out completely grandly. But let's just go ahead and see something. Let's measure this distance here. Let's see if we're close to like 75. Actually, we got more like 60. 75 should be like more over here. But we've got some fairly big rays going on here. It's the 20, that's good, that's 30, good to 30. Yeah. So ray diagram come out a little bit shady, but I can see that this one's really not parallel. That's kind of how things turn out sometimes with the ray diagrams. They give you some general depiction, but if you start having rays that are exceeding the paraxial limitations, large angles with respect to the principal axis, we start getting discrepancies with things. Nonetheless, we've got something that gives us a general depiction inversion uh, mathematically. A little bit different. But all in all, that's basically that. Real image. Real because Q is equal to a positive value. Inverted. M is equal to a negative value. And there we go. That's that. So let's move on to the next one, which is basically the same setup. We're just changing the location of the object. So we'll draw this out again. Now we're going to say that P. 10 centimeters. Try to draw this nicely again. Take focal lengths again to be 30. Let's first draw out this ray diagram and see what's going on with it. Now we are inside the focal point. Things are going to change a little bit. Let's check this out. So first ray, parallel to the principal axis, then refracts such that it is aligned with or goes through a focal point. So if it goes parallel to the principal axis, that's great. It goes. And then we ask ourselves, what type of lens is this? This is the same lens that we have before. It's a conversion lens. So this particular ray will, in fact, just cruise on down and go through this focal point, just like before. 
All right, so there's our first ray. Second ray goes through the intersection point of the length of the principal axis, unchanged in its path. So we'll go ahead and look at this. So it's gonna go out like that. What do we already see on this side? These two rays are divergent from one another as they continue traveling onward. They're never gonna intersect, which means that we're gonna have to trace back the paths until we have a location of intersection, which means that we're gonna have a virtual image, which means that the image is gonna be on the front side. Nonetheless, let us just go ahead and draw in this third ray. Third ray goes through as aligned with the other focal point and then refracts parallel to the principal axis. We've already used this focal point, so now we're using this one. It's not going through this one because we want it to interact with the lens, so this is where it is aligned with comes into play. So we line it up with this focal point here. That's the path that this ray takes. It's aligned with that. And then it goes ahead and refracts parallel to the principal axis. Which looks like that. So these three rays are all divergent from one another. Now we gotta trace them back. trace back the refracted rays, that's the important key there, the refracted rays to a point, to a point, or an intersection point, to an intersection point. So well, let us go ahead and do that, so we got to be a little bit careful, but we can manage it, do the first ray first. So this is the refracted path here, so this is what I need to trace back. Trace this one. Back like that. Next one. Next one. We trace back along its path. And the last one. It's a green one. We trace back along its path. And not exactly, but within a reason, we get a general intersection point right around in here, giving us the location of our image. So we've got a P there and a Q there. We notice that this is trace back paths producing the image. This, this must be a virtual image. It is on the front side of the lens. It is upright. Magnification is positive. It is bigger than the object. Magnification absolute value is greater than one. So those are some things that we can say in general by this depiction here. Let's make sure that things correlate mathematically. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's go. Now, one over P plus one over Q is equal to one over F, which gives us that Q is equal to the quantity of one over F minus one over P to the negative one, which is one over 10 centimeters minus one over, no, oh, excuse me, one over 30 centimeters, I'm getting ahead of myself, one over 10 centimeters to the negative one, which gives us next negative Q. Let's go ahead and see, one divided by 30 minus one divided by 10. Negative 15. Negative 15 centimeters. Well, if we said that that was 10, adding on about half of that distance, that looks about right, within reason. So we got ourselves something that matches up pretty well. And then the magnification. M again is equal to negative Q over P, which is negative negative 15 divided by 10, which is positive 1.5. Got a virtual 
image. Since Q is equal to a negative value and upright, since M is equal to positive value. Here we go. We get things that match up. 